coming up in this week's episode. This. Are you ready to win the ultimate Touring Australia prize pack valued at over $35,000? Wow, now this prize includes from my 4x4 accessories, a canopy. Plus fitment. Yes, and from MSA 4x4 accessories, your choice of storage solutions. Plus, from Stratus Outdoors, one of their adventure packs. From Nike, one of everything. From Outback Tracks, one of everything. A water transfer solution from our good mates at Adventure Pumps, plus the ultimate off-road touring pack from Light Force Lighting, like we have on our 79. And to complement your mode canopy, a roof rack from Off-Road Animal and McCormack's four-wheel drive. And Dad, don't forget Expedition 134 storage boxes. Yes, and from Australian 4x4 Treks, a 16-night Cape York tag-along tour for two people, plus six nights relaxing in a luxury bush lodge with our good friends up at Rossville Retreat. This is the ultimate Australian touring pack and it's yours to win. How do you enter? It is so easy. Only two simple steps. Number one, subscribe to our YouTube channel, smash that little red button. And number two, complete the entry form on our website with your details. It is that easy. You've got to be in it to win it. How incredible does that prize pack look? Oh, so good. Oh, good luck. Got to be in it to win it. Okay, quick update. All right, the feel goods. I've been feeling pretty terrible, to be honest. We've spent a week in bed. Oh, my gosh. Whew, and not shocker. just catching up on rest either. That would have been nice. No, look, yeah. it got to the point where this, you know, mysterious virus overtook our lives, completely wiped us on our... Mm. Little Jasper even ended up in, in the hospital uh, with some respiratory issues. And we just, you know, give a shout out to all of the, the guys there at Nambour Hospital. That yeah, just, thank you. You're amazing. Man, that, that's amazing. These people, you know, we don't give, I think, enough credit to all of those frontline people. So thank you. And he just, he's a champion, you know. He just, yeah. we're so blessed. Uh, and then, a, you know, a week later... I Your ended turn. up, yeah, they put me in hospital as well, bloody checking my heart and checking blood pressures and all sorts of stuff. And again, it was this, you know, mysterious virus that they just couldn't really figure out what, what was going on. But look, I'm here, I'm alive, I'm breathing. Yep, and we're up and at it. Any day your breathing's good, isn't it? Absolutely. But a good reminder, I think, too, yeah. just to look after yourselves and yeah. there's plenty of nasty bugs going around at the moment. So just, yeah, yeah. really take care. and Hopefully you've got a good wife that can... Yeah, although I couldn't look after look you from after you. the bed, could I? <laughs> well, which I do. I'm very, very fortunate. I love you. Now we, we look. We we are definitely back to being the feel good family. But what it meant was that it kind of tightened everything up dramatically oh, for us. We lost a week of of uh, leisurely travel. Yes. Uh, another good thing was that we got to see Katie's dad. He was in quarantine as well. God, we've been. Really hitting it in our families, haven't we? But yep. we got to see him before we left, which was really great. We got to see my parents, you know, and hug it out and make sure that they got the grandparent time that they just longed for. So that was just brilliant. Yes, Jasper did finally get to celebrate his birthday with all of his cousins on the Gold Coast, which is always fun. <laughs> Such a buzz. I yep. mean, it's, we end up walking out of there with the headaches because it's just oh, crazy loud fun but gee yeah what a gift to be able to spend it with family so that was a blessing mm -hmm. we've then hit the road and in five days from the gold coast to adelaide Oof. a little quicker than uh we would recommend anyone do but Absolutely. what it meant was that we got to experience some really unique camping as we've traveled down mm -hmm. we took 
the the coast road, which is a bit unusual for us. We haven't done that uh, in many years, yeah. actually. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, uh, but these are some of the, the best camping experiences that we have had in our four years. So we're about to share that with you. Again, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us a like, give us a thumbs up, mm -hmm. and, uh, and share with your friends and family as well if you think it can add value to their travel plans. For now, let's get on with the show. Oh, and get on our website and enter that competition. Just, You've got to be in it to win it. Get, get on board, enter it. All right, good luck, enjoy. How is this place? What a find. And to be honest, we really fluked it. I say we, I mean Katie, uh, because as we're traveling down to South Australia, we thought we'll try and find a, a few really good gems, a few hip camps. Well, this, I think, is one of our new favorites. And what a bummer we're only here overnight, but we are hightailing down there to Adelaide. All right, this place, really is on its own little island it's 100 acres it is called anchorage park and the owners are brad and kim they are two of the friendliest hosts that you're ever going to meet when you pull up to a hip camp and for good reason when you see what they've done with this property no wonder they are absolutely beaming uh, and then to open it up to people like ourselves to come and camp you can see it's a pretty full house overnight which still is not that busy. I mean, all up, I think there's probably 10 bands here. They are looking for some expansion, which will be pretty amazing. But being right on the point, Brad said the dolphins come in every afternoon. The property itself is just manicured. It is absolutely stunning. They've got fresh water. They've got an external shower. Uh, you can have fires if the regulations allow you at the moment you're allowed to have a contained fire which we did last night which was fantastic cooked up the salmon on the weather and then we all just whew, we slept like a log we're getting ready because we're setting off early wifey got a bit of a cough this morning there it's a bit chilly actually i'm just thinking i need to put a jumper on Ooh, cool. what do you think how good is this place i love it all right new favorite I see, I knew you were going to say that. All right, and we'll get Jasper Rooney ready, and I think we should hit the road. We're going to stop and actually have a cuppa with Brad. Yeah, with Brad and, and Kim, Kim before we go. Say thank you and make a plan to come back. I'm just looking because I can see water out this window. Look at and that. then I look out the kitchen window, and there's water as well. It is so beautiful. Love it. It really is a special property, mm. and... I, I do think you're right. I think this is one we're going to come back to many times. I think so. All right.
Gee, it's a chilly morning, Katie Kate. It's a chilly morning, but it's so much like we're back in Tassie with that cool, crisp air and then the beautiful blue sky shining. And of course, this backdrop, it looks like we could be in Tasmania. We're not. We're in a little town called Sutton Forest in the Southern Highlands. I think we're about an hour and a half south of Sydney. Is that right? Yeah, 160 kilometres, I think, southwest. Look, there's a rabbit out there. Another one. <laughs> Where? <laughs> We've been spotting rabbits all night. For us Queenslanders, it's a bit of a novelty to uh, to head south and then start to see all the rabbits everywhere. Yeah. Hello? This is a really unique property. Now, we found it on Wikicamps. It's a hip camp as well. It's called Sutton Farm, and it's an equestrian centre. They also do weddings and events here as well. And then they have five uh, sites available for you to come and camp. Unfortunately, we were just here for the night and we rolled in fairly late yesterday afternoon and are heading out shortly now this morning. But I think if you had a couple of days to come and stay, that'd be really lovely because the environment is so beautiful. Green rolling hills, there's a really lovely patch for you to set up unpowered and they do have powered options as well if you need to plug in. Now, because it is an equestrian centre, there's all the horse stuff. So if you're a horsey lover, this is an awesome place to be. There's a massive outdoor arena just next to where we are parked up. And then there's a bunch of beautiful outdoor stables and yards. There's a huge indoor arena and one of the most impressive stables buildings we've ever seen. Okay. All right, see if it opens. Oh, holy dolly, that is the biggest door I think I've ever seen you open. That's it. Oh. What? It is absolutely a film set, and in fact, Farlap, the film that starred Tom Berlinson and, of course, the hero to a nation, Farlap, uh, was filmed in 1983. Part of that was filmed here. The ground level must have about 50 indoor stables. Mm. There are horses in there. You've, you're asked not to interact or touch any of the horses. Uh, and there's also a really bitey little pony. What's its name? Dante. Yes. <laughs> yes. We were warned about Dante and his big bite, weren't we? Who does he share a name with? One of my cousins named Dante. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, that gave us a good giggle to see little Dante in his stall with his ears back, not very welcoming. Um, no. But we were able to go and say hello to uh, one of the owner's little ponies as well, which was lovely, and, and have a walk around. They encourage you to walk around the property and, and have a good old explore. You can walk through the stables and the indoor arena. If you wanted something really unique, there's actually a loft accommodation mm -hmm. above the stable, so then you're really in the, the horsey action if that's what you're after. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With the rabbits, though, what else did we see? Uh, lots and lots of rabbits. But what lots was chasing rabbits. the rabbits? The fox. Oh, fan dun, fantastic dun, Mr. Fox. Dun, 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 yes, dun, dun, we chased him with the drone, actually. Uh, we did head into town because we got tipped off that mm. the Sutton... Forest Inn. It's an old pub from 1936. Beautiful red brick building. Oh, the building is amazing. Yeah, it? and the food was fantastic, so we can mm. vouch for that as well. I think it would be ideal on a summer's afternoon. You could literally oh my gosh. just walk in. Yeah, well, you could. You uh, could easily walk up. That would be the, the ticket, and then just sit yeah. out on their lawns, because the whole area here is... It's like a step back in time. It is, and as we were driving, like there's beautiful um, little shops, you know, old world little shops mm. and places that you want to just meander and explore. I, I love it here, and we've only seen such a tiny glimpse of it. But and we're the only ones here, We too. are the only ones here. So you feel like you've got access to this just world-class property, and, yeah. and you're it, and super quiet last night. Yeah, just windy. it was. It, it was really windy. Yeah. Um, a couple of the reviews mentioned the noise because it is along the Illawarra Highway, this road is called, yeah. um, but there was certainly no traffic noise for Nothing us for last us, night. So. I have to say, it's up there in price for a hip camp. It's it, expensive. It was $66, I think it ended up for us um, with Jasper to stay yeah. the night, which really is up there when you're, you know, off grid. You're paying for this unique 
yep. film set. Exactly. Really, that's that's where I got to. I thought yep. we've never stayed in an environment like this no. before and it just jumped out and there's not a lot of options in this stretch south of Sydney. Mm -hmm. um, but it's sort of between, yeah, Sydney and Goulburn. Yeah, exactly. Well, we're heading uh, pretty well west now from here up sort of the top side of Canberra, mm -hmm. past Yass. I think we see the dog in the tucker box today. Okay. Cool. I think so. Uh, we're not going to make it to Hay because that's a fair whack it down, but there is a place called Darlington Point, mm -hmm. which is along the Murrumbidgee River. Murrumbidgee? Something like that. So, yeah, so that should be fun. A uh, awesome. lot less kilometres than yesterday, which is good for you, Jasper, yeah. and good for me driving. Yeah. About 480 clicks. So we'll hit the road. Awesome. Good to go? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Right on. Oh, oh, oh. oh there goes another rabbit. Can you see him over there, Jasper? If he's in between those two trees. Look, there he is just there. There he goes, there he goes. Look at his cotton tail. Chili on the really in Darlington Point. This is a hidden gem. Yeah, this is so lovely on the banks of the Murrumbidgee. I said that right. It is. Yeah. And no midges at the Murrumbidgee, which I'm pretty happy about. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely perler weather. Like yesterday, even coming in, just perfect, but cold overnight. But today, yeah. they're going to have a maximum of 31 here, which is apparently the best uh, weather day they've had in some time. They did have some just tragic floods through here mm. uh, as did the mighty Murray back there uh, at the beginning of the year and late last year so where we are now uh, we would be over our head in water that just to give you an idea of how high this river rose it's, it, it's hard, amazing hard isn't to it? believe yeah it is um, it was so nice yesterday afternoon when we pulled up yeah. for Matt and Chris the, uh -huh. the owner operators they came and said hello and good people yeah lovely had a chat and they were saying to us it just has been you know just a remarkable nine months or so of regeneration and what they've done like the green grass he's a green thumb he, I it's mean, amazing they, they both have obviously put in a lot of work to manage this they also manage mm. Uh, another site with 10 cabins. There's plenty of other accommodation options in town that they actually manage. So for two people to do all of this work mm. and then to make these lawns look like... It's a, a little oasis. A golf course. Like, it's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. And, of course, it's, you know, it's a caravan park, so mm. there's the powered sites and all the, the amenities, facilities that you would expect. And then they've got um, a fair amount of unpowered sites as mm -hmm. well, which is what we're on, and just a beautiful green lawn and then the backdrop of all the, the massive gums and then, of course, the river that snakes its way right around the edge of the park. This is the first time that we've been somewhere where everyone that's camping here watches the feel good so we have been social butterflies we've been able to say hello to everyone jasper and i walked into town it's only you know 500 meters into town across uh the bridge across the moment there was nobody there was nobody it was that's right it was probably about 6 30 we're into daylight saving so we're still getting used to that uh yeah. and town was pretty well closed up it was the one night that the pub was closed which was a bit of a bummer yeah i know chris was saying to me the pub's shut now on a sunday and a monday which seems strange especially a sunday oh, right? i know what's going on people yeah. Uh, and there's a little mini supermarket. There's a butcher, apparently, that our neighbours have raved about. Uh, there is a, a beautiful river walk with barbecue areas and free cast barbecues. And they've done it really well. It, it, it is a beautiful little town. I think mm. the hotel's called the Punt uh -huh. Hotel. Yeah. Um, that looks well worth a, a visit. And then there's a, a famous Italian pizza shop. 
that was right. also closed, unfortunately. Yeah, right. That Sue tipped us off about. Yes. So there you go. So they, they have got quite a lot going on here if you pick your right um, day. We're only 400 kilometres now into Mildura. Yes. The wine country. Going to catch up with our mate Van Vandenberg and check out what he's got going on. He mm -hmm. said his properties are just absolutely bursting Wow. at the moment. So we might be able to get out and check out. Uh, the wine grape growers. Where the sun always shines, though. Sun Raja. More sunshine than the Gold Coast. That's what they're famous for. Uh, but listen, on the way here yesterday, and I'll, I'll overlay some footage now, it's, we had this dreaded warning light come up on the 79 as we were just coming uh, on the outskirts of Goldburn. Yeah, gosh, we just literally just set off, hadn't we? Uh, I know, and I just thought, you're kidding. And whenever you see a, you know, an orange light, you think, you know. <laughs> One, what's the problem? And two, how much is this going to cost? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not only time, but dollars. And uh, look, after a call to Toyota and a flick through the manual, we worked out that it was actually the fuel filter. Now, we've had the fuel filter changed a couple of times during the last year, just as we're travelling around. And very fortunately, thank you, Bodie McCormack there in Sandgate, McCormack's, uh, he has given me a list of things that I had to go and get and travel with as mm. a backup plan. Luckily had the backup plan there. I spoke to Toyota, they said, mate, just Google it, you'll be right. So I did YouTube clip later, uh, was able to undo the three main screws on the cap, put down a, a towel, actually then, it was very finicky to get into because there's quite a lot going under the bonnet of this, yeah. this rig. And we're able to move it to the side, take out the O-ring. Luckily I had two, two on board, so yeah. you know, Two spares. Two yeah, spares. Exactly. Yeah. A little bit of a rookie mistake. I sparked a minute there because as I was doing it so close to the battery terminals. Uh, so beware of that. But then once we got it all out, it was pretty straightforward. Change the filter and I can show you the filters side by side here. And you can see that it was obviously time for a change. Mm. Uh, then I was able to put the new one back in. I wasn't able to drain out the fuel. Yeah. Because I just couldn't get to the bottom of it without fuel probably going everywhere yeah so i think with a little bit more time and uh, not being on the side of the road with trucks flying ooh, past ooh, i might yeah. be able to manage this a bit better so i'll talk to benny when we get there and might be able to drain that out because there is a bit of sediment still down the bottom mm -hmm. uh, just gunk that comes with fuel in remote places or anywhere really yeah. put that all back in tightened it all back up even off. showed us a YouTube clip on how to reset the light on the dash. Uh, I mean, it's amazing. Is YouTube the most incredible thing? You know, yep. like most of it. Some of it's a bit out there. But to be able to find information at your fingertips. And the more remote we get, we put Starlink on. Yeah. You can be a bush mechanic in the middle of Australia and yeah. get yourself out of trouble. Or as Bodie says, just FaceTime your mechanic. Yeah. I mean, it's a remarkable age to be living in as a... I, you know, really a novice. I don't really mechanically know a lot of what the hell's going on under there. I just hope that no warning lights come on. But yeah, exactly. when one does and you're able to Google it and find out and fix it yourself, you know, it's, I mean, look out. I know, well, do you know what Mechanic I love? Poorly over here. <laughs> I love that you've done it now. So you know, right, that's just it's, one more thing that you know how to do. Exactly. Look, and it's one to. of the easiest things that you could do, same as like changing an air filter on, on the 79. I reckon I could do it. I mean, I, oh, I'd need definitely. two expedition boxes to stand on though, so I could <laughs> see over there. Thank you to Nick from Expedition 134. It's got a 100 kilo weight rating. Yeah. So I'm on the, on the, the limit, Otherwise I must admit. Otherwise it would admit. be like this. Look at him. <laughs> but to be able to get up there and, and stand on that was perfect. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, we will at some point too go through that whole uh kit of what we have as, as backup plan just so you can you can check it out it's pretty yeah. straightforward but yeah thanks again to Bodie so yeah, very awesome. cool and we're on the road and then we're here so we did about 480 clicks just shy of 500 yesterday a little bit less today only 400 into Mildura which mm. is good that'll give us another Heaps couple of 80 yeah, yeah good boy exactly yeah see school started already I love school it school on the road boom tick yeah. for the day and uh, that'll give us a couple more hours there with, with Ben and, yeah. and being able to catch up yeah Sunraysia does have some produce quarantine like going into South Katie Australia. Katie loves her quarantine checks. I'm prepared this <laughs> time around. I've got actually got a little bag here of some stuff that I just knew we weren't going to get through. I've chopped up a massive fruit salad for us to eat on the way. Um, so we'll drop those over to Maureen and John, I think, on, on the way out. One of our neighbours over morning. there. All right. um, but yeah, good to know if you're heading into that Sunraysia region, region there are mm -hmm. 
fruit fly bins and quarantine checkpoints. Do the right thing. Don't get fined. Yeah. It's a pretty hefty fine. Yeah. Ready to go? Yeah. You're a good boy. Look at you all rugged up. He's a bloody good traveller, this one. Double yeah. jacketed back there. All right. Here we go. Oh. It's been a bit of a shock to the system coming from the warmth of the Cape to our yeah. nine degree mornings. Isn't it? Mm. And by the way, I had two fuel filters yeah. so I've got one there and um, I probably will just go and top it back up and get a second one because they they're inexpensive and they don't really weigh anything and, yeah. and I always carry a couple of air filters so yeah so we're good all right happy yeah, to go good job all right thank you <laughs> thanks for watching please do like subscribe and share our channel and if you'd like more information on full-time RV travel and living visit our website thefeelgoodfamily.com there you'll find loads of free resources our weekly podcast caravan cooking recipes our monthly go rv magazine articles and much more we look forward to seeing you next week take care of yourself and your family and happy trails